So I needed some place to uh, start uh, for a preamp on my little uh, protoboard. And so I looked around for a real simple one just to stick in there. And uh, I found this one, which I really like. Um, it's just a very simple uh, difference amplifier. And uh, it, it has a phantom power, goes out to the XLR connector, and then uh, it has an instrumentation input, so I can, I can uh, ignore that. Uh, I hurt my finger today. I, <laughs> I was sharpening some gardening tools, and uh, it was sharp and uh, took out my finger. Uh, went to the emergency room, and two stitches later, I'm back in shape. Anyway, so it has a section here to drive headphones. Uh, to left and right channels go through uh, different op amps. So that's kind of cool. So I thought, yeah, this would be a good good thing to build. I'll just use my LM386 for this part. All I need is really this part here. And it's just a 1K, 1K, 100K, 100K. So it's times 100, uh, times 100 uh, instrumentation amplifier. So uh, I went ahead and added that to the, oops, things are getting tangled up around here. Okay, so I added that to my circuit here. Uh, I think you can see that. I added the uh, circuit over here. Uh, it's surface mount, so it's too hard to see, but there is a, uh, uh, basically the same circuit. I've modified it a bit. I'll, I'll probably go over that later. Um, this is a, a single supply op amp, not a dual supply op amp, so I had to fudge it a bit. But anyway, same circuit, so um, I'll put that in there the other day. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, um, this particular uh, schematic that I found online was actually uh, a bit of reverse engineering that some guy did. Um, obviously, it's handwritten, and uh, I don't I don't know the guy's name now. He has a he has a website. If you if you uh, Google Audio Buddy, um, uh, you'll probably find it. He he has a nice. Uh, blog about him ripping this thing apart and tracing it out, talking about the things he likes about the circuit, the things he doesn't like about the circuit. Uh, he made some good comments on the uh, power supply section. So this thing's meant to run off of, uh, um, it's down here, this thing's meant to run off of a, a 9 volt AC charger. So 9 volt AC com comes in here and it gets changed into plus and minus 15. And so that's uh, that's a very very interesting circuit. And then the other circuit that's in here is the phantom power. So you need 48 volts for the phantom power, and so it does it here with uh, an oscillating op amp and a voltage doubler and tripler type of thing. And so it changes plus and minus 15 into plus 40. Uh, so that's that's kind of cool too. So I thought, okay, he's got some good things here. Um, maybe I should just buy one of these things. Um, maybe they're maybe they're cheap. I don't know. Maybe I can get a broken one. Uh, so I went onto eBay, and I ended up buying one, and it just came today in the mail. Here it is. It's made by M Audio. It's called the Audio Buddy, and it's just a preamp. It does nothing else except amplify, and it has phantom power. So it's also um, a supplies phantom power to the to the microphone and it has uh, on the front panel it has two instrumentation instrument uh, inputs and on the back it has two microphone inputs it has a button to turn phantom power on and off and there's a LED in the front that tells you whether phantom is on or off and then uh, it has two outputs which are balanced slash unbalanced I'm not sure what that means um, but Let's open this thing up and uh, see what's inside. I'm excited. Um, you know, I thought either I can just use this as is, but more importantly, um, it has everything that I need for the resistors and connectors and power supply and all that other stuff, and I can put my own circuit inside. So just for the value of the, um, of the case, um, I thought that would be a great thing. So I bought this thing for $6. <laughs> Which was a great deal. So, six bucks. I think. I think when they were new, 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 they were a hundred dollars, and then I think they kind of came down to the fifty-dollar range, something like that. 
Um, and uh, people seem to like them. They said that the noise level's a little bit high on them. Um, but hey, for the money, they said it, you can't beat it. Um, so here it says M Audio, uh, made in Taiwan. Interesting. It's a steel steel box. It's, it may, it feels like it's great construction. Um, why aren't we opening up? Why does it not open? Oh, oh there we go. Oh, I guess you have to take the knobs off. I just ripped them off. Oops. Okay, so the knobs have to come off. Make a mental note of that. So, what do we have inside? Lots of black things. Might be hard to video it. Um, so there's a lot of uh, single inline packages. Oh, those are those cool op amp packages. Yeah, these are all uh, Japanese radio corporation op amps. So that's a good quality op amp. There's supposed to be very low noise. Um, and it, they come in those cool packages. I really like those things. So uh, let's see, the microphones come in the back here. So over here must be the, must be the preamps and there's two of them. So there's two op amps right here and there's a bunch of resistors. So this must be the op amps here. And um, there's still lots of room in here uh, to add to add circuitry, right? Put a bunch of circuitry, circuitry in here. I could have a, a secondary board in here to put my amplifiers and stuff in. Here are the uh, three terminal regulators, plus minus, uh, plus minus 15 regulators. So power comes in the back here. Uh, it looks pretty high quality. The uh, circuit boards look very good quality. Silk screen. Uh, like I said, the uh, op amps are of, of reasonable quality. Um, who makes the uh, who makes the capacitors in here? Uh, e E N. I'm not familiar with those capacitors. But, uh, yeah, everything looks quite nice. So, it was sold as is, no returns, and um, it's, it, I don't think he even powered it up. I don't think he had a way of powering it up, so I need to find a 9-volt AC charger. I've got a lot of DC chargers. I think I have a few AC chargers laying around, so we'll have to, we'll have to find one of those and uh, power it up and see if it works. All right, I uh, dug through my bin and I found a uh, uh, Hewlett Packard AC adapter, <laughs> nine volts AC out output. So yeah, we should be good to go. Looks like it's never been used. It's got one of those little uh, twisty things on it. It never looks like it's been un untwisted. So who knows where that came from? It's kind of pretty big too. Um, so let me, uh, let me see if I can get this thing to work. All right, uh, should we measure it first? Uh, I usually don't live dangerous, you know. Um, but let's go ahead and measure it. Is that on the camera? No. Okay, uh, AC, AC volts. And we're measuring, whoa. Can hold this with three hands says 10 volts AC. Sounds like nine to me. Okay, so we have uh, AC voltage and, uh, whoa, I just bent an LED. Oh, shoot. Well, um, should I put the case back on it? Yeah. Let's see, where'd my AC go? It's over here. Oops. Wires are all tangled up. Okay. Okay, so we will put in the AC. And, oh no, the connector's the wrong type, I guess. Why doesn't it go in? Oh no. Wrong size connector. Shoot. I'm gonna have to find a connector. I'm have to find a connector of the right size. Ah, uh, okay. Boiled. Let me find a connector. All right, I found the right connectors here. I found a, uh, I guess it's a female, male, whatever. I found the mating connector 
here and here. So I made a little adapter so I didn't have to rewire. I'm, it, maybe eventually I'll put a different connector on the end of the uh, end of this uh, power wart, wall wart. Um, but we have it hooked up now, so we have nine volts AC. Uh, move my stuff out of the way after all the construction. Okay. Uh, I think we should put the top on. What do you say? Then we can't measure anything, but yeah, there we go. Uh, I think it's hard to get these LEDs lined up when you put the case on. I hadn't really saw that in the uh, in the beginning. I got the LED on, and that one seems to be a bit crooked. Well, anyway, let's turn it on. Oh, there we go. Now it's all in place. Turn it on. Oh. Can you see that? We have a light there. It says power, uh, main. And uh, we have uh, no other lights anywhere because I don't have a microphone. But we do have the main and there's a button in the back which I'll press. Oh, and now the phantom. Uh, oh, and we've got some lights over here. But uh, the phantom light came off so we should have uh, 48 volts on the connector. And that's basically all it'll do until we get a microphone. Oh, see that when I turn turn the phantom on off, you can see LEDs blink. These two blinked and those two blinked, so whatever. Oh, that's pretty cool. So this is up and running. And we have connectors in the back. And we should be able to measure 40 volts. Let me, uh, let me get out a voltmeter here. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, I think this middle pin's in the ground. Uh, it's at the bottom there. Uh, is there a ground, easier ground that I can do? I'm going to have to do this left hand because the... Can I do it over here? Yeah, I can get rid of it. There we go. I can get just get rid of the... Get rid of the lights. Okay, now I can do it right-handed. Oh, these are hot. Oh, wow. The guy mentioned that. Mentioned that the, uh, oh, I don't have the, I don't have the power, the uh, phantom one. That's why I'm not getting any voltage. He mentioned these, these regulators get super hot and he put heat sinks on them. So I can see why. So I will do that too. I will put heat sinks on it. But let's, uh, let's turn on the phantom power now. I am getting nada. Why am I getting nothing? Oh, there we go. 40 volts. 40.5 volts. So I think the spec is 48 plus or minus 4. So this one runs a little low. Let me turn this off before the heat sinks get too hot, or the uh, regulators get too hot. Um, he mentioned that that's a bit low, and uh, he has a workaround for that in the circuit. And I will do that to the circuit. I think it was a good a good suggestion. Um, and we'll put heat sinks on these regulators. They take the raw power and then they take it down to plus or minus 15, and they're dissipating quite a bit of quite a bit of power because these are all bipolar um, op amps, so they're kind of power hungry. They're very low noise, but they're kind of they're kind of power hungry. Let me talk to you about the uh, uh, about the phantom. Uh, Phantom power and what he did to fix it. Uh, let me zoom in here. There we go. So this is a um, circuit that you may or may not have seen before. All right. So this is just an oscillator. So this part here is just an oscillator. So we have um, plus or minus 15 uh, wave right here, whacking up and down plus or minus 15. And that goes into uh, this point here through 100 ohms. Now, he also wants extra power, so he puts in a second op amp. So both these op amps are going up and down, they're, they're oscillating. And so they're putting some type of AC source right here. And this diode lets that AC, the positive side of that AC, come to this node. 
and then that goes through here, and then that goes through here, and then it goes out. So um, you have another way of getting AC across here. Um, and so he has this capacitor tied to minus 15. And when this thing's whacking up and down, it basically puts a positive voltage here. So that kind of ups it once. And then when it goes through the other, it takes off just to the positive sides of things. This basically does like a DC offset of the, uh, of the voltage. So if, you, if you're going, let's say, uh, whacking up and down 10 volts, now you're whacking up and down um, uh, plus or minus 10, let's say, plus or minus 10. And you put this circuit in here, now you're starting at zero and you're going above that. So now you're going from zero to 20. So plus or minus 10, you're going zero to 20, zero to 20. And then if you put it in another one, uh, you're bumping it up one more time. So instead of going zero to 20, um, uh, you can go uh, up to 40. Um, so he said that the reason to have this first stage here was to up it once. And so this point here, there's a big, big capacitor. This point here basically becomes a plus voltage. And I think it becomes plus 10 or something like that. And he says, well, why are you, why are you, why are you creating a plus voltage? You already have one. It's right, it's right here. You already created a plus 15. So he says, go ahead and just tie this point to plus 15. And then right away you get an extra five volts. And so that's what he did. Um, so I will try that as well. I think that's a great idea. And that'll get you up to 45 volts, which is perfectly within spec. Um, and then once again, add, uh, add heat sinks to these regulators that are getting super hot. I'm burning my finger on one of them. So he is correct. Um, and that all happens back here somewhere. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of bunch of diodes back there, which is the, um, I think those diodes are, are these diodes here. Um, and this is kind of a funny circuit too, if you didn't catch it. This is actually a doubler circuit as well. So instead of getting uh, nine volts AC, you're doubling that. So instead of getting, uh, you know, nine here and minus nine here, you're getting um, double that uh, after it goes through these two stages. So you're getting 20 and 20, and so, or 18 and 18. Instead of 9 and 9, you're getting 18 and 18. So instead of just getting a bigger wall wart, I guess for some reason he wanted to use the 9 volt ones instead of 18 volt ones, he put in this doubler circuit. So that's kind of funny too. So you need to drop that 18 volts to 5 volts. So you've got 3 volts running through here. They get hot. So that that circuit's back here, goes to the regulators, and then the thing that makes the phantom power, I think is in here. There's a couple diodes and some capacitors and stuff. So I think, I think this section here is where the, uh, uh, where the phantom power is generated. So yeah, let me, uh, let me play with it some.